Hello! Today I'm going to talk about the blocking oscillator. This video took me a while to prepare because I had trouble wrapping my mind around how a blocking oscillator works. I read a number of explanations and they were confusing or overly complicated and convoluted. And my experience has been if I don't understand somebody's explanation about something, it's probably because they don't really understand it themselves. This is especially true when I was trying to unravel how special relativity works. So a blocking oscillator is quite common. They are used in self-oscillating voltage boosters, which are used in a lot of LED flashlights to give a boost to the brightness of the light without taking a lot of energy from the battery. So here's the Wikipedia article on blocking oscillators, and their circuit is just a little bit oversimplified, but right below that in the article, as I saw it, was a circuit called a Joule Thief, which uses a blocking oscillator. And this was almost the simplest circuit I could find, but I found an even simpler version looking for one I could put into the LT Spy simulator and play around with. And I made a slight modification, just changing the topology to something that's more common by moving the primary of the transformer from the emitter of the transistor to the collector. And I was able to tinker and improve my understanding about how the blocking oscillator works. So let's go ahead and draw that circuit up here and analyze how it works. So we have our voltage from the power supply, our VCC, and that goes to a transformer. Here's the primary, which is on the collector of a transistor. And then the secondary, which is on the base of the transistor, and there needs to be a resistor there to make it work. And this will go to ground. And that's about the simplest version of the blocking oscillator I could find. In this particular circuit, this was 1.5K. And this was 40 millihenries. And this was 60 millihenries. Some sources say that you must have a step up from the primary to the secondary, but that is not true. In fact, the one in Wikipedia, which I did try in LT Spice, worked just fine. And it was a one-to-one -one ratio. So it does not need to be a step up in the transformer. A lot of blocking oscillators will put a capacitor here, but I found that that was unreliable in the simulations. But having a resistor here made a reliable oscillator, although the one in Wikipedia has a capacitor in parallel with the resistor and works fine and that capacitor can be used to control the duty cycle of the oscillator. So let's take a look at how this works. So let's turn on the power. So we have our plus voltage here and our ground down here. And what's going to happen is we will get a flow of current through this inductor into the base of the transistor, which will cause the transistor to conduct. And therefore we will get a current through the collector. Let's get rid of these component values because they are cluttering up the diagram here. So we get a little bit of current through the collector. Now what's going to happen? When we get current through this coil, we are going to get a magnetic field. And if this current is increasing, that means that magnetic field will be increasing in strength. And if we have that changing magnetic field affect this secondary coil, it's going to cause a current in that coil. And it's important to remember the parameters of how these coils work. So you might want to review the inductors in DC circuits and in AC circuits previously to make sure you understand this, but I will try to cover it as quickly as I can as I explain the circuit. So this current begins, causes a increasing magnetic field, which then affects this coil. And while that magnetic field is increasing in strength, it causes an increase in current into the base. So this has to be wound with the right orientation so that we get positive feedback. In other words, as this current increases, we get feedback over to here that also causes the base current to increase. Positive feedback rather than negative feedback, which would cause the base current to decrease as the collector current increases. So we get our positive feedback. So as this current increases, the magnetic field increases causes a current to increase in here. And so we get a cascading increase in the base current, increases the collector current, which feeds back, which increases the base current more, which increases the collector current more. And so this conducts more and more and more. And it will keep doing that until one of two things happen. 
One is that the circuit saturates. Now, what does that mean? You might want to watch my video on saturation, but what that means is at some point it gets to where increasing the base current in the transistor can no longer increase the collector current. That's going to be a function of the entire circuit of the biazine, but especially of the impedance in the collector, which also includes the internal resistance of the power supply. But we're going to get to some point where the voltage drop across the internal resistance of the power supply and the impedance in the collector is going to be to the point where we can no longer get more current by increasing the base current. There's no more voltage left to increase that. So once this saturates, then that current can no longer increase. The other thing that might happen is we might saturate the core of the transformer, which has about the same effect. Saturating the core means that increasing the current no longer increases the strength of the magnetic field. And that magnetic field must be increasing in intensity to cause a coupling over to the secondary. So it's only when that magnetic field is changing that we get a change in current over here. So what happens? This magnetic field st stagnates, no longer changing. Therefore, this current drops dramatically. So we had a little bit of current, which caused current here, which caused more current there. That positive feedback caused an increase in current. But once we stop that changing magnetic field, suddenly that current drops down to a much lower value. And as that current drops down, of course, now this magnetic field, which is sustained by the current going through the collector, that current decreases because the base current decreases. So the collector current decreases. That's going to cause that magnetic field to decrease. So before it was increasing, I'll represent that with an arrow pointing that way. It's not really getting bigger, but that's what people say sometimes. So the magnetic field is increasing, causes a current to flow this way, but now it's decreasing, which is going to cause the current to want to flow the opposite direction, which is going to reverse bias the base to emitter junction of this transistor. But of course, that's going to cause this magnetic field to collapse even more rapidly causing, I'll draw the arrow the opposite way, causing a cascading of this drop of the current here. Less magnetic field here causes that to drop even more. So we get a very, very rapid drop in the current in the collector. So if we look at the collector current, we're going to see a rise in the collector current and then a sudden drop. And we can see that in this diagram here from the LT SPICE program showing the rise and drop of the current. Also, this rapidly collapsing magnetic field causes a great amount of voltage on these two inductors. As that magnetic field collapses much more rapidly than it built, it creates more voltage than we put in. And in some of the simulations I did, which I think were quite unrealistic, I got close, not quite, but over 90 kilovolts across this. Of course, in the real world, that wouldn't work. I tinkered around with the parameters some, and I'm going to make a video showing how I did that, and that will be available to my $2 and above patrons. But I tinkered around with it, making the components a little more realistic, adding some resistance and capacitance to the inductors, adding some resistance to the voltage source. And that voltage from the collapsing magnetic fields became much less, but was still pretty high. Still got sometimes in the hundreds of volts. So you may need to be sure to get a transistor that can handle high voltages for this to work. So now we have the collapsing magnetic field. The current is going the wrong way. Uh, going to get a current flowing in this direction through there, high voltages. Everything is, is pretty much working backwards. And of course, we have the base to emitter junction reverse biased, so it's no longer conducting. So this is cut off or blocked, which is why we call it a blocking oscillator. So that's basically the cycle of the blocking oscillator. Let's uh, redraw this real quickly and quickly say what happens again. So we have our collector circuit with the primary of the transformer going to the base of the transistor. Of course, this could be a field effect transistor or even a vacuum tube, and it could be a PNP transistor if, if we reverse the voltages, but I'll just keep going the way we are. There's the secondary going to the base the most simple of the blocking oscillators. So once again, we turn it on, we get a little current into the base, which causes more current in the collector, causes an increasing magnetic field, which goes 
and causes a greater current in the primary, which causes a greater current in the secondary. So we get a cascading of increasing magnetic field and more and more current in the collector. We'll draw that rising current as that line there. But when we get to the point where something saturates and this magnetic field can no longer increase, the base current suddenly drops, causing the collector current to suddenly drop and all those magnetic fields collapse. We get a reverse bias on the base to emitter junction, which blocks the transistor, why it's called a blocking oscillator, and the current will drop very rapidly down. All the magnetic fields will collapse, causing big high voltages, but once they're finished collapsing, those high voltages go away. And if we look at the voltage on the collector, what we're going to see is a decreasing voltage as that current goes up, and then a sudden spike in voltage that can go up to hundreds of volts, and then another decreasing voltage and a sudden spike, and then decreasing voltage. So we get some very, very high voltages on this collector, which is why this can be used as a voltage booster. So that, in a nutshell, is how the blocking oscillator works. It works because we get positive feedback from the collector to the base through the transformer, but once things saturate, that feedback stops suddenly, everything collapses, but once it reaches the original state, it will do it again, over and over again, as it oscillates, once again, creating these very high voltages. So how do we tell a blocking oscillator by looking at the circuit? The main thing is that it's probably going to look like an Armstrong oscillator, but I can turn this into an Armstrong oscillator, at least the basic idea of one, by putting a capacitor on one of the transformer windings. So this would be a collector-tuned Armstrong oscillator, looks almost exactly the same, but with the proper bias, this will work as a sine wave generator and is now an Armstrong oscillator. But if we take this capacitor away, there may be capacitors other places, but if you don't see a capacitor in parallel with one of these coils, then it is not an Armstrong oscillator and almost certainly a blocking oscillator. Another thing about the blocking oscillator is the way it works. It works by an increasing current, but something triggers something that causes that current to suddenly drop and then repeat. So it works more like a relaxation oscillator than it does any other kind. So we have to kind of analyze it like a relaxation oscillator. In fact, some people categorize it as a type of relaxation oscillator, and I can't argue with that categorization. So there are a number of different ways to make a blocking oscillator. You can look it up and see many different circuits. I'll show a few of them up here. Here is, a, again, a jewel thief that is in the article on Wikipedia about jewel thieves. And there are a number of other circuits. Here's another one here, uh, which I modified into this that we already talked about. And here is yet another version of a blocking oscillator. So there's many variations on this theme, but they all have the one thing in common, is a transformer going from either the collector or emitter circuit back to the base circuit but no tuned element in either of those inductors that make up the transformer. And so we don't have an Armstrong oscillator, but we have a blocking oscillator, which works because of the collapsing magnetic fields, reverse biasing the transistor, thus blocking current there and causing everything to collapse and then rebuild over again. I want to return real quickly to the Joule Thief circuit in Wikipedia, which I did make in LT Spice, and as I said, I will make a video about that available to my $2 and above patrons. But a quick look at that circuit. We have our primary in the collector of the transistor. I built it with a 2N2222, 2 but in real life, you're probably going to have to use a transistor that can handle more voltage. The schematic in Wikipedia uses a Russian-made transistor that you cannot get any place as far as I can tell at this time. There is the secondary of the transformer and a resistor, plus a capacitor in parallel with that resistor. And this also has an LED because that is the primary function of this jewel thief is to power that LED. And I'm going to take that out of the way because it's probably not going to be a 2 and 22 if you build a real working version of this. And it called for a 1 to 1 ratio here. I just simply used two 30 millihenry inductors. 
in my simulation, and I found it would not work without the LED. So the other one that does not have this in the base that was very, very similar would oscillate without the LED. This one requires the LED to oscillate. But what I found about this circuit here is that I could change the duty cycle of the output by changing the capacitor and the resistor. Now, of course, we want a pretty short duty cycle. In other words, we want this to be on for a short time and off for a long time because we want to save our battery that's lighting this LED. And so it'll appear pretty bright if we flash it very rapidly and leave it off for a fairly long time compared to how long it is on. So short duty cycle. A duty cycle is the percentage of time it is on compared to the time it's off. So I'm showing maybe what about a 15% duty cycle here. But once again, that would not work without this LED. And I could change that duty cycle by increasing or decreasing the capacitance or this resistor that also changed the oscillation frequency. So that's going to have to be something you take into account. And with the other one, let's uh, convert this back to the other circuit. I did not need that to make it work. Where I had a step up between there and there. I found I could control the frequency by changing the size of this inductor, much more than changing the size of this inductor did. So this is the main control of the frequency, but when we throw the capacitor in here, and once again, once I did that, I needed the LED to also make it operate, then these have a big effect on the frequency. So that's about all I have to say about the blocking oscillator. There's a lot of variations on the theme. You can look that up on the internet and see a number of different circuits, some of them actually working circuits that you could build. And I just gave a quick explanation of how it works. So if you found this useful and informative and want to help other people find this video, please give me a thumbs up down below. It helps people find the video and please subscribe and when you do, hit that gray bell so that you get notified when I put up new videos. And as always, a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon and other donors. I could not make these videos and keep Vocademy free without your support. And thanks to everyone for watching.